and welcome to the Primary Storyline, a video series about post-production as it relates to Final Cut Pro 10 motion and compressor. My name is Andrew Gormley and I will be your host. We are back with a vengeance after a week off with the start of the series that everyone has eagerly been requesting, kinetic typography. Over the next few weeks, we'll be building our project and learning the concepts you can use to make your very own kinetic typography project. This video will acquaint us with the interface of motion. Next week, we'll touch on key concepts like movement, masking, drawing in the camera. And finally, the next week or so after that, we'll put a project together. So let's dive in by actually opening motion. So I'm gonna do that right now. The very first thing you see when you open motion is this project browser, which is just a quick way to start a variety of compositions, most of them geared specifically for Final Cut Pro 10. For the kind of thing we'll be working on, let's just make sure that Motion Project, which is just the basic vanilla project, is selected. Over in this right-hand panel, you'll see we can choose from several presets for project resolution. So we have 4K, we have broadcast, we can do presentations here, and then standard SD stuff. Let's just keep it on Broadcast HD 1080. If yours isn't on that, just select that one. Right here, we can also choose a frame rate, but for right now, just to go over the interface, I think this is fine. And in advance, we can set a duration, though all of this is malleable later on in the process. For right now, let's just press open. And let's go full screen just to minimize distractions. Great. So, starting on the left, we have three tabs, starting with the file browser. So you can think of this almost like the import window in Final Cut Pro 10. You can navigate through folders right here to add photos, video, music, and layered image formats like Photoshop files and PSDs. The next one is the library. And this houses a huge range of built-in generators and filters and shapes and all sorts of things that we might wanna use in our motion projects. It's a super expansive library, so we're not gonna go through all of it, but just looking through these will give you a pretty clear indication of what is possible in motion, and I have to say, it's pretty awesome. And finally, we have the inspector right here. It's very likely this is where you'll be spending a majority of your time. It's empty right now, but once we have media imported or text generated or shapes drawn, the inspector is where you can go to manipulate and keyframe all of it. It's basically where the magic happens. So let's swing back over to the file browser right here. And you can see that on my desktop, I'm actually in a folder here that I've created with a couple of things that we can import. So if you have importable things here, clicking on them will play them in the preview window above, just like this. You can turn off audio, which I sometimes tend to do uh, just by clicking on this button right here. But if you're trying to import music, that kind of defeats the whole purpose. In this case, I have a photo and then here's a song. So if I unmute this, you'll hear that it's actually playing. You can import any selected media by either clicking the import button right here or dragging and dropping over into the layer section to the right. If you click import, it will automatically be added to the default group and inserted into the timing pane, which is this area down here. Let's see this in action. So I click this clip and I press import and it's added to this default group and it's in the timing pane down here. If you drag and drop, a new group will be created like this. This layers area is almost totally analogous to Photoshop's layers panel. Items placed higher in a group will cover those that fall below it, and the same is true of groups themselves. So if I were to take this video clip and drag it above the photo, that pretty much obscures the whole thing. The same is true in reverse like we just saw. The next two tabs are pretty self-explanatory. Media shows all of the media that we have imported into our current project, and audio allows you to listen to and make adjustments to the audio mix. So if we were to bring this over, it would appear in here. Keyboard users rejoice. These tabs are mapped to command one through six for super easy access without ever moving the mouse. Watch this. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Done, it's that easy. A few other things of note while we have an item imported. Let me go back to layers here and select this clip. Directly below the canvas, you'll see this blue bar which actually represents the clip itself. This is called the mini timeline and gives you a visual of where the clip falls in terms of the total project duration. 
If I drag this clip further down the timing pane, you'll see its position in the mini timeline is actually updated accordingly. I can also utilize the playhead from right here or this mini one that appears up here. Between the canvas and the toolbar are the transport controls, these guys right here. You can jump to the beginning or end of the project by using this one. You can play from the beginning or play. You can record keyframes, which is super, super useful and something we will be doing. And then you can jump one frame backward or forward. For most of this, I prefer using the keyboard, but your mileage may vary like all things in life. So below that, just like in Final Cut Pro 10, we have our toolbar, and that's where we do a lot of our work. So the leftmost group allows us to manipulate existing elements. The next group allows us to create elements like shapes and text. This lonely guy right here is for masks. In the middle, just like Final Cut, is the dashboard, which tells you the current time code of the project. Finally, on the right-hand side, over here, we have in order the HUD toggle button, which is a contextual mini inspector that I recommend keeping open more often than not. And then the rest are camera, lights, generators, behaviors, filters, particle emitters, and replicators, most of which we actually will be touching on in the upcoming videos. So feel free to explore a little bit and familiarize yourself with the interface. Draw a couple shapes, import a movie, try to break things. We're going to be diving headlong into the basic concepts in the next video, and namely, to repeat from earlier, they are creating and manipulating shapes, masking, behaviors, and the basics of the camera, which will essentially turn it into a 3D project, which is pretty cool. Thank you for watching. If you found it useful, please give it a good rating on iTunes as it will help others find it as well. And if you have any questions or something you'd like to see covered, you can reach out via my website at andrewgormley.com or on Twitter at Dark Driving. I'll see you all in the next episode of The Primary Storyline.